We live in a pretty mixed up world. Sometimes it's overwhelming to us and very confusing. And we try to figure out how do we navigate life through this? How do we flourish as human persons in the way that uh, we can tie together all the parts of ourselves and find integration both interiorly and exteriorly in the culture in which we live? My name is Donald Nesty. I'm a Catholic priest. I'm a member of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit, which is a missionary order. We're in about 62 different countries around the world. And I am very fortunate to have been allowed to be the founder of the Center for Faith and Culture here at the University of St. Thomas. The Center for Faith and Culture holds a unique and very important role here at the University of St. Thomas. I was very excited to get involved with the Center when Father Nesty first approached me because I think it's the one place where all the disciplines can come together. Um, it is a place where not just the Catholic faith, but all faiths can have a dialogue and can explore the various dimensions of college life and the various dimensions of life in general. And it is a place where everyone is welcome. It's a place of dialogue. The center is really a gathering place. We bring people together and the major process that we enter into is one of dialogue. What's key to us is how you develop relationships. It's in the area of the relationships that we experience the most anxiety. It's in the area of the relationships that we experience the greatest tensions in our lives. So what we try to do at the center is address that in a very fundamental way. First of all, giving us a, a really great understanding of the dignity of the human person. The dignity of the human person is essential to whatever we do and closely related to the expression of the dignity of the human person is the ability to learn to dialogue and speak the truth in love. So this is the methodology of the center. Well, I think one of the best things about the Center for Faith and Culture is that it really keeps it practical. It makes, you know, people who have all these questions about, you know, meaning and life and where does God fit in all of this? And it brings it down to a very practical level. The Center for Faith and Culture at St. Thomas University has a focus on the founders, the framers of the American Constitution, Hamilton, uh, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, etc., and uh, who believe very strongly in God, duty, honor, country. And the Center for Faith and Culture continues to teach those values here today in 2019. So what do we address? We address things like the condition of the family, which is the basic self of society. We address things like our human rights, our inalienable rights that are expressed in the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. What does happiness mean? What does true freedom mean? What does life mean and how does that life flourish? We go over to our constitution and we say to form a more perfect union. How do we find that more perfect union? Because everybody wants it and they don't know how to go about getting it. So what we have really have to look at is how do we learn to reach out instead of turn in? Our culture is faced with a very, very individualistic society, each one seeking his own rights over against the rights of others. And we say we should seek those to the extent that we don't tramp on each other's toes. But who's going to determine when we tramp on each other's toes and when we don't? So we have to face the reality that in our society, the primary focus is on individualism over against the communitarian aspect of our lives, which would make us a more perfect union. How do you keep that in balance in your life? And what does faith say to you about your dignity and the beauty that you are a creature of God? The center for me is, um encompassed in a quote that is in my head and has been for since I started and it, it goes like this. The school of Christ is the school of love. In the final day when the general examination takes place, love will be the whole syllabus. To me that encompasses the Center for Faith and Culture and this is love that serves, love that transforms, love that heals. 
It's love that calls us to lead. It's love that causes us to encounter. The fundamental dignity of every person depends on how we perceive ourselves. Sometimes our tendency is to think to make ourselves more than we are. At other times, we think we are less than we are. But how do we get right in the balance and understand that we are beautiful, we are endowed with these rights, we are endowed with intelligence, we are endowed with free will, we are endowed with memory, we are endowed with imagination, but at the same time, we are not the ultimate creator of the world. CFC mission is very simple. It's a way of life in the light of faith. That means we will try to introduce the Catholic voice of values to all of the participants in the program who are working with us and try to help them to understand the significance of the Catholic value. We help them to acquire the Catholic values and knowledge and also learn the skills to become a faithful citizen uh, in our society. We have a long history of serving the people in this area, and the University of St. Thomas is in many ways like the city of Houston. It reflects the globe, and every time you walk across our campus, you see the face of God's people around the world. And we want to share that with the world, and the call toward tomorrow lets us do that. It sets ambitious plans that will double the size of the university. The physical plant of the university will continue to grow and expand. We'll do that in a way that really touches on the heart of the human person. As we connect with each individual, we build a better society toward each other. And that's the awareness piece that the university's Call Toward Tomorrow hopes to do. We hope to bring one another in contact with each other, and we'll do that through the infrastructure that we build, through the communities that we make, and particularly on our campus, through a learner-centered environment. We have great programs in the center, and we have a table set for people, which we say rests on four legs. And the four legs are these. One is the academic. We have a wonderful Masters of Arts uh, in Faith and Culture program, which takes all these things that I've been taking, uh, uh, talking about and incorporates them in a very, very carefully structured curriculum. In our classes, there's this beautiful coming together of like relationships and thoughts about where um, our culture is at at that point in time, because even our perspectives are different. The second thing we enter into is ongoing dialogue in the area of ecumenical dialogue and interreligious dialogue. We relate to all Christian churches and all people who have been baptized as Christians, but also enter into dialogue with Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, and so forth. And the beautiful thing is when they have lectures and seminars, it's all with academics, so they know what they're talking about. That's the first cool thing, but um, they know what they're talking about, but they put it on a level to where I can understand what the issue is, what the problem is, and see how I can remedy it in my life, but also in a larger sense too, in our community. The third way we do it is in and through ongoing educational conferences, symposia for adult people who would like to participate in those. For instance, we have one coming up on religious freedom, Another one we're going to do is on grace and race, which is going to talk about discrimination and bias and prejudice. So through the Center for Faith and Culture, the really cool thing that they offer students, alumni, friends, families, everybody in our UST community and outside of it um, is lectures and seminars about a lot of these topics with regard to social justice, things in this world that are happening, really key things that people need to know and understand and also have a discussion about. Like there's been several panels with such diverse people on it that you can get all of these points of views in one area together and just have this beautiful life-giving talk about these really complicated world things where you're trying to understand cultures and, and problems 
problems and issues and how do we solve them together, like really noble things that people are trying to figure out. And to come together in a lecture style like that in an open forum where it's like, okay, this is a completely safe space. This is the topic we're talking about. We're talking about racism and it's completely safe. Everybody just know that this is the topic and we're gonna get in the nitty gritty, but it's gonna be okay. And then the final thing is that we reach out to the Catholic Church in the Archdiocese in our pastoral programs where we go into parishes and help them also to reflect on these things. So it's a very broad spread of dialogue, but dialogue is at the center. And in fact, in, in the uh, uh, Masters of Arts and Faith and Culture program, the final course that you take is the art and the asceticism of dialogue. What does that really mean? What kind of skills do you have to have? What kind of emotional intelligence does one have to have in order to be able to be, express your truth while be, while, without being sucked in all kinds of anxiety of the society? Father Nesti asked me a number of years ago to teach a course for the Center for Faith and Culture entitled The Art and Aestheticism of Dialogue. Very big title. And in this class, he wanted me to get people to talk about any kind of um, important life question that many times people have a hard time discussing. And he wanted me to do so, of course, from a Catholic perspective, but also be mindful of differences of all kinds. And we did that, and it was an incredible success. We had students from every religion you can think of coming in and really agreeing to disagree and sometimes finding beautiful common meaning. It was very meaningful and a great experience. So principle here, the principle here is the table with four legs, everybody's invited, everybody is welcome, and the door is always open. What I was able to get from working with Father Nesty and the Center for Faith and Culture is a deeper understanding of the world around me, how I was being impacted by the culture and the feelings of concern for my family, for my marriage, for what I saw going on around me in terms of traditional values. How do we bring this faith vision into the discussion in the public forum? Because that is precisely where we have to make our contribution to come to a more perfect union as a people, where there's infinite diversity in our culture right now, and especially in Houston, which is the most culturally diverse city in all the United States. And as Houston goes, so will the nation go. Well, what contribution can we really make? It's not a question of a religion which is pointing fingers and judging and condemning people, but it is a vision of reality which liberates. It must be a liberating force and help people to find true life, true liberty, and then find their true happiness. So that's what we're really all about. Collaboration is a very important word now, very important concept, uh, dealing with uh, the complexity of the social, uh, cultural problems. We all need collaboration, even education. We need people who have a holistic education. That means cross departments. That means, for instance, the MAFC, the Master of Arts uh, for Faith and Culture, this program, uh, need to collaborate with the other departments like faith and science, uh, economics, uh, uh, management, leadership, uh, or psychological dis uh, that discernment, uh, uh, and all of the skills in dialogue. So we need to uh, invite all, all other departments to come in and to work with us to provide the best formation uh, for the students in our program so that they can become uh, clear and focused uh, in the areas of concentration so that they know how to embody the knowledge and the values which they have learned and also acquire the skills necessary for them to become faithful citizens of the society. Father Ben was with us at the beginning of the center. He was just as passionate and loving as Father Nesty, and I know the center is really going to just continue its whirlwind with Father Ben in the office. 
Father Nasty is the founder of the Center of Faith and Culture, often describing the, the goal of the Center of Faith and Culture is to set up the table, to invite the people from different backgrounds, ethnic cultural backgrounds, different religious backgrounds, all coming together, sit down and dialogue on critical issues that we are facing right now in our contemporary society. Here at the University of St. Thomas, we have a wonderful uh, mall. At the one end, we have a library, and at the other end, we have a beautiful chapel. And as we look at the two of these, we see them interfacing. They are not opposites, they are complementary. And they have to come together in order to help us as people who don't share the same vision on everything, to continue the dialogue that will bring us to a more perfect union and help us to experience ourselves as one instead of divided and do away with this anxiety, this restlessness, and the loneliness that we have. The issues of loneliness, anxiety, and restlessness in our culture is uh, a large part due to uh, cell phones. People are lonely nowadays, spend more time on communication devices, cell phones, iPads, uh, PCs than they do talking to people. And we have a loneliness epidemic in this country. In fact, in Great Britain recently, they instituted the Department of Loneliness. So people are lonelier. And we were made to live, work, play, and die in groups. In 1850, the average size of U.S. household was 10.5 people. Now, according to the last census, is three, and one out of every three households is a household of one. So we're lonelier, which produces anxiety and restlessness. And the Center for Faith and Culture wants to bring people together from all races, colors, creeds, and religions, and let us bring unity to community. The Master of Arts in Faith and Culture program has taken me on this really interesting internal journey so that I can better talk to people about what they might be experiencing. So for example, like one of the problems in our culture is loneliness. I mean, it's so simple, but people are lonely. You know, they're attached to um, digital things, but some of those really meaningful relationships are lost and people are lonely and sometimes they don't identify it as that. But what this program does is it helps you identify what that issue is and then say, okay, here is how I can really interact with this person to help them see like you're not alone, like it'll be okay. Like how do you connect with others and how are you trying to take them to that other level of seeing that, you know, it's not just Jesus who's here for you because he always is. It's let's create a friend group for you that's authentic and real and meaningful and like people who really care about you and love you. Like that's important to get through this world because it's a grind. <laughs> so trying to find people like that. and. I feel like this program teaches you those very practical, basic ways of communicating and reaching other people that I don't know that, honestly, many other programs teach. It's just, it's too, it's too basic. Like, they, of course they teach you the high level stuff, but the very, um, the very practical way of just dialoguing with a human being and recognizing the oneness that each of you have is just so valuable within this program. The Center for Faith and Culture and its offerings are open to all people, to all races and creeds, to all ages. Uh, we did a lot of things for the youth, um, as well as adults, and for clergy, laity. I know that there's so many out there that need what it has to offer in terms of um, opening up their minds to other thinking, to get rid of bias and prejudice, to learn how to speak with their, even their children, which I am struggling with right now. Um, we hear that all the time in our parish, that, that families are falling apart. They can't talk about politics. They can't talk about religion. So he tells us through all these things that he does in the center, um, how to, embrace all of that and go forward in the future with hope. The call toward tomorrow is a way that this university will connect in new and exciting ways with the culture around us. For instance, this fall, we will launch new applied associates degrees online and targeted toward technology. That will also be 
delivered in conjunction with new master's programs that will have wider appeal in everything from theology to process chemistry. Those are examples of how this university continues to expand and touch the lives of people in the culture beyond what we may have done in the past. And that's why the fit with the Center for Faith and Culture is so tight. There is a great diversity of students um, in age, in race, in faith, and that adds to the um, passion and the enthusiasm and the richness of the cohort portion of the program. Um, the courses are exceptional. Father Nesty's spirituality class, his virtues class, faith in the dominant American culture, Maureen Bakke's dialogue class, Dr. Froelich's faith in science, they all answer or help us to answer the question on how do we live as faithful citizens. To be a faithful citizen is somebody who acts and conducts himself in a way that uh, uh, represents their faith. You know, we have a sign here at Gallery Furniture that says you preach a sermon with your life a whole lot better than with your lips. And that's what I try to do. Preach a sermon with my life every day of supporting God, duty, honor, country, and doing what's right to make Houston, make Texas a better place. So the Master of Arts in Faith and Culture program really tries to instill in its students that to be a faithful citizen means that you are in the public square, starting conversations with people and meeting them where they are, wherever they're at in their lives. And that happens on the University of St. Thomas campus, in the Houston area and abroad. I mean, we have people who travel worldwide. 11 of us from the center traveled to Rome uh, where we met with people from all over the world and we discussed with the Fires of Atonement at the Center for Union that very thing, ecumenism, which is to bring about the unity of all Christian faiths because Christ prayed that all may be one. Christ did not pray that we worship God in a thousand different denominations. Christ prayed that we we all should be one. And that's what ecumenism is, a sharing of gifts and encounter with people of other Christian faiths. And the way that we do that in a very practical way is through dialogue. So an example of that is right now where we're at in our culture, it's so polarizing. Like you're a Republican or you're a Democrat and which one are you? <laughs> you know, there's really no, being in the gray is kind of like a weird spot. So if you're a moderate, it's like, oh, you can't make a decision. But what the Master of Arts in Faith and Culture program teaches is that you need to dialogue and have understanding with everyone. You know, the Catholic Church is not a Democrat. The Catholic Church is not a Republican. The Catholic Church is this beautiful tradition that was founded by Christ. And so how does that breathe life into our democratic republic? And it's a whole nother world of understanding. There's no liberal, there's no conservative. It's just human, the human person, and what that person means to the world around us. The center has available lectures, conferences, symposia, um, spirituality, seminars, anything you could want that you can even call them and they would be delighted to meet with you on a one-to-one -one basis and they invite you to all their lectures. Everyone's welcome. Um, most of them are free of charge. They sometimes um, upload them on the internet for them to come view. Uh, it's there and I just, that's my passion. I want people to make, avail themselves of all that it has to offer. Faithful citizenship, um, as defined by the Center for Faith and Culture, is it really gives us this understanding of recognizing that we're all a part of the democratic republic that is the United States of America. So we all have a part to play in voting and making sure that we know what's happening with our local legislation. And in that, we're still faithful Catholics. So we talk about dual citizenship. And what that means is that as Christians, our citizenship lies in heaven. So that's the first part. And then the second part, is we're obviously here on earth and on earth we are in the United States so what do you do with that you know we try to be faithful in terms of like our prayer life and our spirituality which links us to our heavenly body but here on earth you have to engage in the public square you have to be a voice of change or a voice to others you know along with the moral compass that you already have built in so those two things coming together is what makes up faithful citizenship and actually living that out 
and engaging people in dialogue and using your voice out in the public square, that's where it really just kind of gets some momentum and takes on the form that I think the MAFC hopes for, or I guess the Center for Faith and Culture really wants to bring the University of St. Thomas to the Houston area. Our diocese has a big responsibility in terms of pastoral ministries, in terms of evangelization, in terms of spirituality, to provide all of the spiritual, spiritual enrichment for the laity so that they can feel and experience the love of God, empowering them to be uh, the yeast of the society, to, to activate that kind of passion, that love in the people, and uh, to build up the sense of belonging, the sense of uh, participation and mission in all of the laity. That's what the Church of St. Vatican II has been calling all of the laity to become responsible for, for all of the, um, the, the works of the Church. It's not simply the clergy and the sister, but all the lady. And that's why I think the Santa Fe culture can provide some formation, uh, some uh, training uh, programs for the art diocese to prepare them to become the leaders for the future. I support the Center for Faith and Culture because I think it's very important that we maintain our culture, a culture of faith that was started in 1776 with the uh, Declaration of Independence and uh, continues to this day. I think faith has a very important role in our society and we need to continue uh, maintaining our culture, uh, the Western culture of faith, the Judeo-Christian culture. We have supported faith and culture for the fact that it's uh, been very enlightening for the students to increase their Catholic faith and culture and also to provide a very prominent place at the university. Also by bringing in outstanding speakers, this also provides an extra treat for the students as well as another prominent place for the university. So what's really at the heart of this dialogue? It's a relationship between faith and reason, faith and character, faith, and culture. All of them are three ways of trying to integrate the capacity of the human person to think things out, on the one hand, with reason, also to live out the principles in your moral life, character, and thirdly, how do you affect the way of life that we share as people? always bring in the vision of faith with that. We have so many questions that we ask ourselves and we have to enter into reason on those with each other, coming from totally different points of view and being open to listen and then respond to how we perceive things and the truth that we hold. So it's a wonderful balance particularly, and I think that's the real balance that you get in a an institution which has a religious affiliation. So it's a wonderful place to come, and I certainly would invite anybody who's interested, from whatever background, whatever belief system you have, to come. We will welcome you into the dialogue, and we hope that we all grow together.